What's up, everybody? Supreme Decisions here, and today I actually want to come to you with a. You know what? I'm going to bring to you guys a video that showing basically what I believe to be a part of racial profiling that is encouraged in the Frisco Police Department. Now it's it's throw, I'm throwing it out there, but the profiling is a part of a programming process and i'm going to show you the video because it was part of one of the i guess task force that you know because the task force that police have are such great ideas and these are all good people and they're not just doing something to create crimes which we're actually going to show you know, anyway, anyway, let me get on to the thing. Because I'm also going to put up another body cam video of a Frisco Task Force police officer that is engaged in what I also believe in that case was a little bit of racial profile. But what I want you to pay attention to, because what I'm going to speak on is a July 23rd, 2023 incident. It was in Frisco, Frisco, Texas, that involved as the news referred to as a black family stop. The reason I say it that way is because it's being stated as dismissive and as a one-off. That's why I preface the video with this is part of a racial program profiling and racial programming process that is being done in the Frisco Police Department. I'm going to give you something that backs those crazy ass statements up. So give me a second. I speak to officers making mistakes because they are human. Which is why you need to challenge everything they do. Case in point, as in this case, but what I want you to pay attention to is not the stop, not the police escalation, but the actual practice. So again, I'm prefacing a lot of things that I want you to pay attention to because this is not a new story, but it is a story that a lot of people are overlooking the greatest part of the detail in it. Now, what do I mean by police practice? Here we go. On July 23rd, 2023, Officer V. McQueen ran a license plate of a vehicle leaving a hotel. Let me repeat that. On July 23rd, 2023, Officer V. McQueen, because we don't have a first name as of yet, ran the license plate of a vehicle leaving a hotel. Not a vehicle she got a call for. Not a disturbance from a hotel, not a description of the car or the occupants, not involved in any sort of traffic infraction, just simply leaving the hotel. Now, Officer V. McQueen then mistyped the plate. I'm going to say that one more time. Officer V. McQueen mistyped the plate. She then escalated it to a high-risk stop because that car didn't match the plate she ran, which was her mistake. But keep in mind, it was still a car Officer B. McQueen should have never come in contact with because there was no reports, there was no infractions, there was no crime to be had. And that is not only, you know what, because I say that for the police apologists who love to say, if you aren't doing anything wrong, the police won't bother you. Because now, from that one incident, because this is not a one-off, this is not the first time she's done that, and I guarantee you this won't be the last, because this is a practice. This is an accepted practice. Now they can actually understand how stupid that is to say to themselves. 
and even more stupid to say it out loud to someone as justification for bad behavior by other humans. I'll let that sink in because I know that goes over a lot of people's head. Because again, like I said, it's for the police apologists who say if you're not doing anything, the police won't bother you. Officer V. McQueen had no business running the license plate. Officer V. McQueen had no business coming in contact with this family. Yet, she made a mistake. She then escalated it to a high-risk stop. High-risk basically means God's blazing. And she was absolutely accommodated by her partner or by a Another officer, who I believe is Officer Jonathan Vargas, or Varghese. Not sure exactly exact what his name is, but just going to be put up here anyway. He'll be here. But they have the body cam as Jay Vargas. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm pretty sure that's not the proper way. However, it's also an illustration of we're either training cowards or killers, because the first thing out of Jonathan's mouth is, if you reach for the gun, or if you reach for anything in the car, we're going to kill you. You're going to be shot. Keep in mind, these people's lives are at risk because it's a mistake by an officer. And here's, here's the tea, ready? Officer B. McQueen is told by the driver, who is the mother of a 13-year-old boy that's playing basketball in the tournament. Just keep that in mind. I, I, I'm saying that because I want you to catch it. She told them, yeah, there's a gun in the car. It's in the passenger side glove box. How do I know that? Officer V. McQueen said that she was told by the driver, who was the mother, that there was a gun in the car on the passenger side glove box. So they're told there's a gun in the car. They're stopping someone who has not committed a crime. There's a mistake by the officer. There's an escalation by the officer. Jonathan comes in, or Jay Vargas comes in, threatens to shoot them. He's given orders. He has no real clue of what's going on. All he knows, this is a high-risk stop. Guns are blazing. I want you to take a deep breath right here. You ready? They have not committed a crime or a traffic infraction, yet their lives are in danger by those who swore to protect them. Yeah, I'll pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand that. Those that chose to protect them have placed their lives in danger. But here's what I want you to pay attention to. You know, this situation here, cowards and killers. I want you to understand it. Ready? Officer B. McQueen and Officer Vargas know there's a gun in the car on the front passenger side, right? The driver is out of the car without incident. The husband, who was on the passenger side closest to the glove compartment, which they said there was a gun, he's getting out of the car. The gun is legal. No incident. Yet, they pull a 13-year-old boy out the backseat. I'm going to say that one more time. They pull a 13-year-old boy out the backseat. Not the one that's by the gun. He's in the back. Mom is talking to the police calm. Talking to Officer McQueen, very calm. I want you to let that sink in. Mama. As concealed carry. Danny, who's next to the gun, has concealed carry. Gun itself, legal. Had no reason to be stopped. Also made a mistake. Child in the back seat is the one that handcuffed, not the person near the gun. Tell the mom when she asks, why is my son in handcuffs? Because again, completely befuddled why a 13-year-old that's not near the gun that's in the back seat 
is handcuffed. She is then told her son is being detained on investigation for you ready? A stolen car. Mama was driving. The gun was near dad. That's the one that what they were worried about. But they handcuff a 13-year-old that's in the backseat. When I talk about the programming, I want you to understand this. And I'm going to review this real quick. Because again, stolen car, he's not driving. Not near a gun because he's in the backseat. They're talking to the driver, which is mom. Dad is showing his ID and his um, concealed carry. Why is the 13-year-old detained? What's the suspicion of stolen car? How does that equate to him? Here's the next question. Ready? Why was the 13-year-old the only one handcuffed. Most people are not even going to catch that. Because again, this black family was stopped. All right, I get that. Why was the 13-year-old boy that was in the back seat that was not driving, supposedly a stolen car, was not near a gun, which they were so worried about because they were going to shoot anybody that reached into the car. Why was the 13-year-old the only one that was handcuffed. D.L. Hughley spoke about how the police are visiting violence onto our children by acts of handcuffing a seven-year-old girl in Florida, you know, and placing her into the back of a um, police cruiser because she wanted to be with her mother instead of being in school. Or how about the 10-year-old that was in Chicago that had been arrested multiple times by the same exact officer Nobody really questioned that. Or about how about the kids in Connecticut where they had their bikes stolen by police officers because they were riding on the sidewalk, not in the street. That actually brings me to my own children. It wasn't until maybe a couple months ago, my, my son, he's 22 years old now. I didn't understand the impact of the things that was going on with me as far as my children and how they were being impacted with these things. Hold on one second. I truly never understood the impact of the things that were going on with me and how they were impressed upon my children. And what happened was my 22 year old, he's actually, he actually sends me this joke about, um, I think it was Godfrey who did the did a joke about, oh, well, you don't ever see the police bothering the black guy wearing a mascot. And he goes, well, maybe if you wore an ascot, you know, they would not have stopped us, you know, stopped you so much. And kind of hit it with the giggle, ha, ha, ha. And I sat down, I thought, I was like, dude, I didn't get stopped that much with you, maybe once or twice, you know, maybe three times. His response is what blew me away. Because he goes, it seemed like it was every day. Now that hit me because that it was heartfelt when he said it. It seemed like it was every day. And I thought about it, he was 10 or 11 years old when that was happening. When I was going through all the issues with the RICO, when I was going through all the issues with the police stops and suing police and fighting DAs and fighting K, he was there and it was, it was twice. Two stops in his mind as a child, a 10 year old, it felt like every day that was happening. Now, mother son, who's now 20, 21, he, he's a completely different story, has zero respect for law, law enforcement because he was with me at least 10, maybe 15 times I was arrested or stopped and he saw these people snatch me out of cars, snatch me out of truck, pull me down, put a gun in the back of my head, call me all kind of names and berate me. And then 15 minutes later, he saw those same people doing those same acts, refer to me as Mr. Bay. He has no respect for him, none. But he has a little bit more in him as far as building the resentment than my, my oldest. 
and it was it was just profound to me because it took almost 10 12 years before I saw the impact of one stop maybe two stops and those stops that he witnessed were not to the point of what this young man witnessed. He didn't get handcuffed. He wasn't snatched out the car. I was the only one. He wasn't put there, but we don't know what effect that handcuffing this 13 year old who was nowhere in the vicinity, had committed a crime, wasn't near a gun, who had done nothing other than show up to play basketball. That's all he was doing. That's all his parents was doing. They didn't even commit so much as a traffic infraction. And Frisco police wants to say, oops, my bad. But here's the, here's the, here's the catch. Now, just like I said, we don't know how it impacts that young man that was in the backseat. But the question is, is that the goal of the system on how to act? Train the child as the way they should go. You know, you know what your place is. Because why not handcuff the dad? He was the one that's closest to the gun. He's the stronger one. He's more of a threat than any. The 13 year old child. They're training him in a way. Is that the way of the system? To train our children as to where they should go. Just keep in mind, he had committed no crime, he didn't have access, he was not resisting, and he was the only one handcuffed. Catch that. I need you to catch that. And Frisco police says they want to be transparent because they have not released the names of the four officers that were involved. Whoops. So transparent, we don't want to tell on anybody. However, they have opened the door for a lawsuit by admitting officer negligence. I'm going to say that again. He admitted to officer negligence, not only in a post, but he's done it in video. And the sad thing, the sad thing is Officer McQueen is still working. So you tell me, are they trying to correct the system? Was the system working as it should? and training our children 